Hey everybody and welcome. Uh, today I am doing something a little bit different. Um, rather than something specifically costume related, I want to talk about hair. <laughs> so, uh, this is what I'm considering video zero in a new series I'm going to be dabbling in off and on, um, which I'm calling my powder room primping series. So, what I want to do today, rather than a specific hairstyle from start to finish, I want to talk about um, hair texture and how I have found to, uh, ways I have found to make my hair do historic stuff because, well, we'll talk about this. All right, so I have really, really fine hair, like a lot of people. Uh, very fine and poker straight, thanks to my Anglo-Polish father. Um, let's see if we can do this. This, this, let's go this way. This is the entirety, full head of my hair in a ponytail. So yeah, I, I don't have a lot. So, that doesn't really work for historical costuming because women's hair tended to be textured either naturally or by doing various things to it. So when I was younger, my hair would not take a curl for, you know, love or money or a gallon of hairspray. But um, as I've gotten older, it's gotten a little bit better. Um, I can do either wet sets now or uh, use a curling iron, although I've found that it doesn't often last very long. Even when I do like for some things I've done, really, really tight rag curls, and even that has fallen out within a day or so, which for a one day event, you know, an afternoon or an evening, that's fine, um, but for anything that lasts longer, <laughs> like uh, weekend events or even just two day events, uh, it, it's not the best way to do it. Now, if I wanted to, I could do wigs, but honestly, I don't like wearing wigs. I find they, they get too hot. Um, also, they tend to be too heavy, especially with the other stuff that I need to put on my head, you know, hats and all that stuff, depending on what time period it is. So whenever possible, I prefer to style my own hair and add hair pieces in as needed. Um, it was completely normal for women in the past to use hair pieces. Um, up until probably what the 20th century, they didn't, they weren't even always actual human hair and they didn't necessarily match a woman's natural hair color or hair texture and it was perfectly okay to, <laughs> to have hair pieces that didn't match um, because we are now in the 20th, 21st century and it is possible to get, you know, any kind of hair, synthetic or human. Um, in any shade under the sun. It does tend to stand out if you're wearing a hairpiece that doesn't match, but uh, luckily my hair is fairly dark brown for the most part, so I can usually match with either a number two or a number four occasionally. Um, Sometimes four is a little too of uh, like a brassy auburny color for me, but that's another story. Um, I also, <laughs> I inherited my mom's gray, gray hair streak, so I do have to consider that occasionally. Um, but I did dye it for a while, but I honestly, I don't care anymore. It's fun. <laughs> so I just, I just live with it. Uh, dying takes too much money and upkeep anyway. All right, so <laughs> after all of that, um, let's get into some specifics. I, as I said, curling my hair doesn't work for giving it texture and most hairstyles that you need to have some texture, you know, just plain poker straight like this doesn't work. So curling didn't work. What happened is a few years ago, I purchased a deep wave, uh, I think it's, it is not currently in my drawer. Okay, so I purchased one of those, those deep three barrel wave curler, beach heat wave thing, whatever they're called. And the place I bought it from 
which I believe was Sephora, but I don't remember. They were for that brand. They were offering, uh, if you spend so much money, you get a free either curling iron, mini crimper, or flat iron, I think it was. And I already had a flat iron and I already had, um, when I do use a curling iron, I use a three quarter, either a three quarter or three eighth inch barrel. So I use like the really tiny ones. And the one they were offering for free was a one inch barrel, which is big, bigger than I like to use in my hair. So what I did was I went for the, let me not catch that in the drawer. I went for the micro crimper. So oh, I need to clean it. <laughs> um, so it is, you know, full on 1980s hair crimps, but I found it works. It gives me the right look and it lasts forever as long as my hair doesn't get wet. So I want to show you just, just how big of a difference it makes for my hair and we'll go from there, right? So. I'm just going to part my hair straight down the middle in half. I really hate doing a center part in my hair. I don't think it flatters my face shape. Plus I have a widow's peak, which I think makes it look weird. But except for a few very short periods of time, basically hair was always symmetrically parted. So. I'm going to pin one side of my hair out of the way before I start this. Just using some really big clips. And I am going to use... I have... OGX uh, Silk Blowout. It's a heat protectorant so that I don't damage my hair uh, because this is a hot tool. So yeah, we're going to do that. Is this the right one? Yes, this one. Pull out a couple more pins. I generally crimp my hair in sections from the top down. I found it's the easiest way. So I'm gonna kind of just take a triangle shape here from about the corner of my hair. Actually, let's just do. So I'm gonna go from that little corner behind your ear. I'm just gonna go straight up to the top of my head to section off my first section. Then we're going to go from that exact same spot and then go flat across the back of my head and I'm just really quickly clipping out these extra chunks so they're out of my way while I'm crimping. more. I'm just going to divide this in half. I also spray my heat protectorant in chunks just to make sure it doesn't dry out completely before I get I also I tend to start oops get back over there so I usually start a little softer at the top I don't press it quite as hard or deep and then usually around when I 
get to my ears, that's when I start pressing and holding a little longer because it's usually around here where I start braiding or otherwise styling. So that's where I want all of the extra texture going on. And I find if I do it all the way up at the top on the first level of hair, it's really obvious <laughs> that it was heat crimped. So I wanna try and avoid that. just lightly so that the texture doesn't start out of nowhere I'm also using relatively big chunks of hair but again my hair is really fine so if I were to section it out smaller it would come out the same and it would take me significantly longer to do so that's why I am working with such large chunks. So you can already see just how crimped it is. <laughs> so I'm going to finish one half of my hair and then I'm going to brush it out and show what a huge difference it makes for texture and volume for me. All right, I'm just gonna let this relax for a couple minutes and cool off before I comb it out. Um, generally, I just use my paddle brush to comb it out, but if I want to get like super fluff, I can also slowly and carefully comb it out with a bristleboard brush, and then it, it does get a lot poofier. But that generally needs to be combed out in sections. So. So even without coming it out, it's gotten, it's already half, this is only half of my hair and it's thicker than what all of my hair was when it was still left straight. But yeah, this, this is, you know, half of my straight hair versus half of the crimped hair. So there's already a visible difference in the amount of hair there. So. I can just loosely get my fingers around, whereas I can, you know, overlap my thumb and finger significantly here. And you can see just how much more it's sticking out on this side versus this side where it's just kind of... <laughs>
This is my plain hair. Versus a crimped hair. This is much thicker and I can pull it out to make it look even wider very easily. And because it is crimped, it will cling to itself a little bit while this will not. This will not stay wide, whereas this will. So having my hair crimped also makes it way, way easier to tease it for styles or other, um, either for, you know, big 18th century or even just um, my 1860s hair. I do tease a little bit when I do the front to get, you know, a nice soft roll going on. And this just, it gives me more hair more volume to work with which makes life so much easier and also um, I tend to work um, like the the braiding hair I will add that into mine and having my hair crimped makes it match the texture of the um, synthetic hair a lot closer so it is much easier to blend it in and I have completely fooled some people um, with you know they know my hair is only, you know, this long, but when I had braids down to my hips and they couldn't tell where my hair ended and the fake hair started, that, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> for, uh, I will say I specifically do this for styles where I don't need like sculptural curls. Like I don't do this for like vintage hair. Um, when I'm trying to get, you know, victory rolls and all that stuff, I curl my hair for that. But if I'm doing like braids and other, things that I just need texture in, or, or texture and volume, I crimp my hair. Uh, there is one other method I would use that gives me a result sort of close to this, but takes uh, forever and then some to do, because I did it once to my whole head, and it took me, I think, like almost two and a half hours to do my whole head, head of hair. And as I said, I have really fine hair. It goes quickly, but it took forever. And that was... Oops. Make sure I'm opening the correct tin of bobby pins. Yes. I have, in a, a couple times in the past, done this for like the front of my hairline um, to get a softer look, but still textured compared to what the uh, crimping gives me. So I'm just gonna do that really quick and what I'm using is a really big u-pin um, this is like a three inch one I also have some shorter if they're just over one and a half inches long so I've also got these but these are a real pain in the ass to do this with so usually I would use um, some type of setting lotion either a lot of body or um, I have a couple like historical pomades and, and lotions that I've also used to get this, but since this is just to show, yeah, as I said, I have a widow's peak and it never likes to split up the middle, because why would it? Let's get a little bit more hair back there. So I'm aiming for about an inch of hair. This does work better when it's wet. So real quick, let me just, it's easier to control when it's wet too. All right, so basically I'm just going to take my U-pin, slide it as close to my scalp as possible, and then I'm just gonna do a figure eight, wrapping my hair around the pin. So, around behind and then up through the middle. You can see I'm kind of wrapping it like that. And I'm just gonna push it up to the top to make sure I have enough room. <laughs> uh, I will say I don't usually do the entire length of my hair when I do this, apart from the first time, because the first time was the experiment. Um, honestly, 
once it gets really thin, I find it's just not worth it. So once I do that, again, depending on what the event I'm going to, that determines how long I will leave it in. Um, when I went to Gettysburg in 2019 for Remembrance Day, I did my hair, let's see, I got to Gettysburg Friday morning. I think I did my hair Thursday morning. I, I mean, when I say I did my hair, I set my, my pins like this um, and I only did it, you know, this section of hair, the very front like headband area. And I waited until like the evening, like Thursday evening. And then I used my crimper and crimped the rest of my hair. But, um, I found like this, this gives a really nice wave that isn't, that doesn't have the harsh corners the way the crimping does. Because even when it's brushed out, you, you can sort of tell. I do know there are some people who will braid all of their head in small braids to get this look as well. I'm lazy. I don't feel like spending hours braiding my hair and then unbraiding my hair. And if I can do it in, you know, 20 minutes with my crimper, I'd much rather do that. So. Um, I'd had this in my hair for what, a couple minutes, if that, honestly, you'll still be able to see what it does, because, and the longer, the longer I leave it in my hair, the tighter it is, and then I, I found it gives me a really nice wave look when I comb it out, and it, it's a little bit softer along the hairline, so that's why I do that. <laughs> so... That is it for this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching how I deal with my hair. And if it helps you, awesome. <laughs> Bye.